Hello YouTube, and welcome to the Double Bass Masterclass for the 2010 YouTube Symphony Orchestra. I'm Matthew Gibson, and I play double bass with the London Symphony Orchestra, and I want to give you a few helpful hints, a few handy tips, as to how you might approach playing an audition in this situation. Now, when playing any orchestral audition, it's worth bearing in mind that a listening panel will be looking out for four different aspects of your playing. The sound you create on your instrument, the musicality you express in your playing, solid intonation, and a really good, strong sense of rhythm. And I would say that all four of those aspects are equally important. In preparing orchestral extracts, the first thing you have to do, if you don't know the music already, is to listen to the music. Buy yourself a CD, a recording, download it if you can, and possibly buy a score, and familiarize yourself with the context of the music you're going to play. And then you can make a decision about the speed you want to play the music and with what character you're going to play it as well. Quite often when playing orchestral excerpts, there is music that comes before the piece of music you're playing, and when you've finished, the music will also continue afterwards. So, for our first orchestral extract, let's look at Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, the third movement. And in this extract, we have two sections. We have the opening allegro and the trio section. But remember, they are both from the same movement. And I think it's important in an audition situation to play both sections at the same tempo. And working out the tempo, I would first look at the trio and think how I'm going to play that part. It's full of energy, off the string, a lively piece of music. And it's one in the bar, obviously. The whole thing's one in the bar. Um, but you want to play the, the, the quavers at a speed where you can get the notes out in an audition. So, da yaka taka 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 da bom bom. I think would be an appropriate tempo. So, take that over to the allegro and start the first movement in that speed. Now, the opening allegro is legato. It starts on an up bow and it's pianissimo. So, at the end of the first line, there is a sforzando. I wouldn't put too sharp an accent on that sforzando. It needs to be a lean rather than a heavy accent. And when we get to the bar before the pause, I would make sure we do that with separate bows so that the F sharp at the end of the bar can be placed within the ritenuto, which is happening at the time. And then we start again with full crotchets. So, in the bars where we have um, diminuendo, subito diminuendo, after the sforzando bars, for instance, in bar 43, there is sforzandos, bar 44, we have a diminuendo. You have to really pull the weight away on that bar to make sure that you're back to pianissimo in the next bar. The next section is the trio, and we want to try and keep the trio in the same tempo as the allegro beforehand. I would play with the first opening crotchet a long note, not short, tai yakataka. It's like a springboard into the rhythm of the next bar. Crescendo through the second bar, and then do two down bows in the third bar to allow you to phrase in two bar phrases in the passage coming up after that.
So, at the beginning of that extract, it's important, I think, to get some shape into the crotchet section. So, phrase every two bars, for instance. And then, when we get to the second time bar, keep the upbeats long, but the important bits as well are the rests. Make sure the rests are in tempo. It really has to click along as one in a bar all the time. And at section B, we start forte, then diminuendo, then piano, and then sempre più piano. And really, you have to make an active effort to lift the weight off the instrument to make it quieter and quieter while keeping in tempo. So, our next extract is Mozart's 35th Symphony, the fourth movement. Now, this is a tricky passage. These running quavers slurred over each bar, piano. I would practice this starting slowly with separate bows and with two different dotted patterns. I'll show you what I mean. That's the first dotted pattern. The second one would go... Then I would practice uh, the same thing, but with slurs. And the second pattern. Then I would practice it in straight rhythm, first separate. and then slurred. And then, if you were using a metronome, I would set the metronome up one level and start the whole process again, getting faster and faster each time. Now, to help you play a fast passage like this, I think I would use minimal movement, particularly in the left hand, don't lift your fingers too far off the fingerboard. Keep them close to the strings. Avoid shifting position too much. Avoid crossing the strings too much. And most of all, keep the left hand fingers relaxed. The other interesting thing about this passage is the dynamics. In bar 134, which is the first bar, it's marked piano. Five bars later, it's marked piano again. And then in bar 147, it's marked forte. And that's pretty much it, really, apart from the two sforzandos in the last four bars. But of course, we have to create some shapes within the music there. We can't just play it completely flat the whole time. So for instance, when we get the tune at bar 139, <laughs> In the third bar, I would separate the first D and play the next three crotchets in one bow, with a crescendo going through those crotchets to the next bar and then diminuendo on the A and F sharp. So then when we get to bar 152, I would crescendo through that phrase, diminuendo on the next one, crescendo through to 157, and then jabba dabba 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 dum each time build through the phrase i'll play it for you One final tip, nerves. We all get nervous. I'm nervous now, I'm dripping wet. And if anybody tells you they don't get nervous, they're probably very nervous too. In fact, professional musicians, professional performers get used to performing with nerves and using that as a positive energy. But something I was taught very early on, which worked well for me, is that before I go into an experience that is going to make me nervous, five or 10 minutes beforehand, I would do a controlled breathing exercise where I breathe in for five seconds, hold that for five seconds, breathe out in a controlled way for five seconds, and then hold that for five seconds. And then repeat that 
four, six or eight times. And I find this slows your heart rate down when you're nervous and it allows you to be in control of the situation and hopefully enjoy the experience. I have to say, I have a fantastic time playing in my orchestra. There is such an amazing variety of music to be involved with and in 20 years, there's never been a dull moment. So try your best and it could be you. Good luck. <laughs>